Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. You know, it'd be one thing in this country if we ne had never had the prohibition of alcohol back in the 20s, and we could look at the gangs and the cartels today and not really know why they exist and all. And, and But we did have prohibition of alcohol back in the 20s, and we saw the formation of all the mobsters like Al Capone and and hundreds of others like him, and all the whiskey runners and the speakeasies and stuff like that. And we, we saw a lot of people dying from people doing bootleg alcohol and, and uh, using sources of alcohol that weren't uh, grain alcohol. And a lot of people died and were made very sick and all that. And so those were the issues really that got it turned around. Uh, you already had a public scare with people drinking, but the public scare you know, it wasn't where these people were getting illicit alcohol and uh, dying from it. And so the mothers back then of the teenagers and the young adults and stuff, they were the ones that were the most vulnerable to this type of activity because they could buy it real cheap. They were the ones that were dying. And then the mothers and stuff sort of came together to uh, get the laws changed and stuff. And they had, they had huge protests and stuff, big, big outbreaks and stuff of, uh, you know, begging the government, please end this prohibition. And the government finally did. They finally did end alcohol prohibition. They realized it was a huge mistake. They realized that it did help bring about all the Al Capones and, and put money in their pockets and all their illegal activity and all that. So why is it today, you know, we're here we are in this country 90 years later, 80 to 90 years later, and we have a drug war that we started back during our greatest president of all, Nixon, boy. And we formed this, what I call another gang, the Drug Enforcement Agency. And uh, this has pretty much declared war on this cannabis plant and the other illicit drugs, which are not killing even a tenth of what uh, alcohol and cigarettes take out in a week. They don't even kill in a year. So we have all of this, these issues about, we didn't really learn any lessons from pro prohibition. We, we know that the gangs back then, the Al Capones, the mobsters and stuff, the only reason that they rose to fame and stuff is because they ran all the alcohol rackets. They ran the rackets that made the money, the illegal rackets. We made an illegal racket and we turned it over to the mobsters and they got filthy rich off of it. And they killed a lot of people doing it. And it's the same thing going on today. Senseless murdering in Mexico by drug cartels in Mexico just to see who can just determine that the ones that bring the cannabis to the United States, all because we have this Controlled Substance Act and this Drug Enforcement Agency that were all formed during Nixon. And these are the sources of why these cartels exist, is because we have, there again, another prohibition. But we didn't learn the first time around. And the fact that we know 50 to 60,000 people have already died in Mexico in less than five years due to cartel violence, that's not changing anybody's talking an attitude about it. It's, you know, they're thinking, oh, well, we have, we have immigration problems right now. We're trying to keep those people to the south of the border. We don't care that 50 or 60,000 people are dying across the border. But, you know, that don't care attitude, the reason that that's happening is because of our drug enforcement agency and this so-called war on drugs that we've been waging against American citizens for over 40 years now, and at a cost of trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. The, the money, you know, it's a lot of money, and there's certainly been a lot of things that could have been done with that. We probably never would have had the economy problems we've had if we'd have pumped that money into our economy instead of just throwing it away on a bunch of drug enforcement agencies causing problems south of the border and, and causing basically the rise of all the drug cartels and, and subsequently all the deaths and the violence. If we had taken that money and pumped it in, yes, it would have made a big impact on our economy and all. And certainly if we didn't have the war on drugs, we could have the hemp industry. And you know that would only pump one or two trillion into our economy each year, which you know we, we desperately need right now. We have congressmen in Congress right now on both sides, Democrat and Republican, and they can't even decide that we should limit the debt ceiling. Here we're coming up on about $14.9 trillion debt ceiling and none of them can decide, hey, should we leave it there or should we raise it? Well, if we don't raise it, we'll have to shut the government down. And then you got another side trying to, you know, get things, uh, spending cuts done so they can raise the debt ceiling back up. What does it matter? It's, it's fiscal irresponsibility. And there's, there's so many things that we could do in this country that we're doing wrong right now that we would have plenty of money. And the Drug Enforcement Agency, the Department of Justice, and how they 
police, the Drug Enforcement Agency arrests and prosecute all the criminals and stuff, all of the money that the hemp industry would bring in, let alone the money that the uh, cannabis business would bring in, even though it would be just a stipend compared to the hemp industry. Uh, because right now the the smokable marijuana market's around three or four billion, and this is as this is at an accelerated, high illicit rate, and of course that'll fall down to nothing once it's legal. But but it's still there. It's revenue coming in. It creates jobs, creates stuff for the farmer, and uh, the hemp industry in itself, though, is one that will add a trillion and a half to two trillion dollars a year just into the economy and create a lot of jobs. But we, we as a country, we, we settle for these lies from our government, and we didn't learn from our past. We didn't learn from this prohibition. We didn't learn about that, the, that making a substance illegal that people want, that they have a constitutional right to use. I mean, if you let somebody use cigarettes, you let them use alcohol, you let them use prescription drugs, and all they got to do is go to a doctor to get the prescription and stuff, why are you all so worried about cannabis and people smoking cannabis? I mean, it's, it's never killed anybody. Nobody has ever gone to the hospital. The, you, all having it illegal does is it boosts the court systems, it boosts the revenues for the local law enforcement and all the court systems and attorneys and lawyers and judges and those different things, but it ruins the lives of many, many, many productive citizens, people who, who, who are brilliant, people who can uh, you know, get things done. They do get things done and smoking cannabis in, in no way affects that doesn't affect their day-to-day -day responsibilities, doesn't affect them going to work. The, it's just insane that we, that we have these laws in, in, the, in the first place. Cannabis it doesn't kill anybody. And you know, alcohol and cigarettes alone push, kill nearly three quarters of a million a year. We don't care about that. Why are we worried about the cannabis? But we should be worried. You know, the money's one thing. The money is one thing. And we are losing money in this country by not having the hemp industry legal. And that certainly could be a boost to our economy, a big boost and a big boost to jobs. But the big thing is, people, the deaths, the innocent lives south of the border that are dying. I mean, you as a human being, does this even seem right? Does it seem even worth one life that we should have cannabis illegal or any drugs for that matter? The fact that only 17,000 people die every year in this country from all of the illicit drugs, heroin, cocaine, methamphetamines, ecstasy, all of those, all of those kill less people than what kill aspirin overdose in this country. And then when you look at 350,000 dying, 350 to 450,000 dying from cigarettes, anywhere from 150 to 250,000 from the effects of alcohol, and then add another 200,000 in there from prescription drug abuse, prescription drug overdose, prescription drug liver failures, health problems, issues, all that's compounded when you're taking those substances. We're talking about nearly a million people a year that are dying, and we have no, we have no concern about that. We're not. We're not putting those substances on a Controlled Substance Act. And the criterion that, that you place something on a Controlled Substance Act even, cannabis doesn't even fit that in any way. It's not a public threat. It's not an addictive substance. It's been scientifically proven not to be addictive. It's also been scientifically proven that we have natural cannabinoid receptors in our brain. This is something that, you know, that, that the DEA didn't bring about or keep from happening, but they are the ones they ignore all of the petitions, they ignore all of the pleas from the American people, the pleas from the government, federal judges, like Francis Young in 85 when one of the petitions was denied. He said that cannabis should not be illegal, we should not be arresting people for cannabis in no way. President of the Harvard Medical School, cannabis is the safest therapeutic substance on the planet, bar none, bar none, bar none. I mean, does that mean anything to anybody out there? Bar none, cannabis is the safest therapeutic substance on the planet. It's non-addictive, has never killed anybody, has never caused one overdose. But what about the 50 to 60,000 people that we just sit back and let get murdered south of the border because we have a drug enforcement agency and they're the ones, they are the ones that are responsible. Every one of those deaths are on the hands of the drug enforcement agency and Nixon and the Controlled Substance Act and all that and all of the innocent lives that have been ruined since. American citizens, all they wanted to do was use a safe herb and y'all bastardized it, came up with all these stupid lies that you came up with and science proved you wrong. The 50 million pot smokers who smoke daily, they proved you wrong. All of that 
and yet you still have this iron-fisted control over the cannabis market and all the illicit drugs. It's wrong. This government is nothing but a lying, lies to the people. This substance is the safest thing out there. It's safer than people drinking Kool-Aid. The sugar in Kool-Aid is more deadly than people smoking cannabis. Wake up, America. Get the facts. Don't y'all understand what's going on? No matter how you want to discount everything that's going on out there, you want to discount the, the money, the law enforcement, the judges, the payoffs, all that, the prison sentences, the lives ruined, all that. All that can be gone. You cannot, though, deny the deaths of 50 to 60,000 people across the border. Please, let that be your stimulus to talk to your congressman, to protest, and anybody you, you see that's foolishly not getting the right information, you give them the information and remind them about the 60,000 that are dying just so some gang like the Capone gang, except even more violent, can kill 60,000 people and control the marijuana market in the United States. And I thank you for joining the Cannabis Corner.